Welcome to the episode of Jay Leno's Garage. If you've been to this website before, you know, a couple years ago we did a road test of the Nissan GTR. Just an incredible, incredible automobile. But there are a lot of people that are not happy with the 480 horsepower this car has. So consequently, this has been a boon to tuners and guys that like to give you just a little extra power. Uh, SP uh, Engineering is one of those companies. Alex Shin, you're the, you're the president, Alex? Come on in here. That's correct. You're the president of the company. Yes, sir. There you go. You're the president of the company. Good to see you. Now, for people not familiar with the Nissan GTR, what are the initial specs on the car? And the GTR uh, stock car, it's 480 horsepower mm -hmm. from the factory, from the box. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, like this car right here, we have them boosted up for its output, 800 horsepower, 700 at the wheels. 800 horsepower, 7 at the wheels. And of course, four-wheel drive, double clutch gearbox, correct? That's correct. Okay, double clutch gearbox. Uh, and you know, for me, this car has really revitalized the brand, because up to this point, uh, and it's a fine company, Nissan, but they didn't have anything that really excited me. I mean, right. the, the 370Z. 350Z. 350Z. Uh, those were okay, but they, they seem more like touring cars than sports cars. I don't know if I'm being unfair. Maybe I'm wrong, <laughs> but you can say in the comments section if you think I'm wrong. But the chassis seemed heavier than it needed to be. Right. didn't seem to have enough power. Uh, the car that really excited me initially, and it shows how old I am, was when the 240Z came out. Right. That revolutionized, you know, up to that point, Japanese cars, English sports cars are here and Japanese sports right. cars are down here. Right. And the 240Z came in and blew the MG and the Triumph and everybody out of the Correct. water. So they've done it again so many years later with this car. This is truly a benchmark automobile. I mean, it has the power of the 911. It sets some incredible number at Nürburgring. That's I'm not correct. quite sure what it is. That's but, correct. Uh, I drove it and I was pretty amazed at how docile it was. When you're, when you're not on it, it drives like a Nissan, and then when you kind of <laughs> kick it into competition mode, right. it really transforms the whole car. So what have you done to this car? Uh, this car, we, we build it for everyday, uh, it's a for everyday driving, mm -hmm. because coming off on the box, the weak spot on these cars is the connecting rods. They're well known to snap on these okay. cars once you try to boost up the car. Right. So we have changing the internal of the motor, which is with the aftermarket rods, forged piston. So who does your aftermarket rod? Uh, we run company like a Carrillo. Oh, Carrillo. Yeah, yes, well, Carrillo's yes. very good. Obviously. Right, in a JE piston, stuff okay. like JE or CP piston, right. that's what we should use. Do you keep the stock compression ratio? On um, this one, we definitely run the same stock compression ratio, which is a bit high. But with now modern cars, you want that compression to screw up the turbos. Right, right, obviously. Now, how about transmission? Can it take the addition of another three or 400 horsepower? On these transmission, it's all being reworked. We reshimmed the clutch pack. We're changing the first gear for the crazy people can do the launch control. Right. It's not necessarily saying 100% bulletproof right. because now we have seen people yeah. crack the transmission yeah, case. Right, right. Remember, yeah. so the crazy people can do the launch control. That's an exact translation. So the crazy people can do the launch control. But that's us. Anybody that watches this website would qualify as a crazy person. <laughs> right. But that's good. Because, you know, I think that's important because so many times tuners come in, they beef up a motor, and they forget the clutch and the transmission. Correct. Because obviously if you make this stronger, you've got to make everything else stronger. Definitely. You know, if you're going to work on your upper body, you better have your legs. Right. And, and, and it's pretty much the whole deal. Right. So the, the whole motor literally comes apart. Are they titanium connecting rods? No, no. They, are, they are just a forge just alloy. Forged. Okay. Yeah. Correct. Well, Carrillo is very good. We use right. Carrillo on everything right. here. In our higher package car, the motor, which over a thousand horsepower GTRs, we do run some titanium rods in those motors. Now, can you remain emissions compliant? I have to say that will be on the tune every every couple of years. Yeah. We can adjust by the tune right. in the, getting the emission passed. Right. Yes. Right. Okay. Very good. Very good. Uh, well, let's open the hood. Let's see what it looks like under there. It is these carbon fiber inserts, is that stock or is that you? That's aftermarket. That's, That's aftermarket us. as yes. well. Okay. Let's yes. open the hood up. Definitely. Okay, I'm guessing that's not stock. That's not <laughs> stock. That's not stock. <laughs> Very cool. 
Okay. What is the display? Is the displacement remain the same? Uh, on this mode, it definitely is the same. The 3.8 liter. 3.8 liter. Okay. Yes. Very good. Very we good. go up all the way to 4.3. We call it the stroker kit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So well, obviously you've got your intakes and everything are down here. Right. It goes all the way to the front, so it gets fresh air. Right. 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 The motor is very compact. It's very hard to see this motor is being tear apart, and that's mm -hmm. what we kind of do. So how much overstock would this kit be? Uh, it's putting a little bit over 300 uh, yeah. all wheels over stock. I mean, financially, how much would it be? Uh, if, I, if I bought one of these, and let's right. say I've had it five years, I really enjoyed the car. Right. I bring it to you to give me these upgrades. What are we talking? This package is $29,000. $29,000. Right. Okay. Okay. And then we offer one year unlimited warranty on okay. our motors. It almost seems like it would be fun to drive one of these, put 100,000 miles on it, then bring it to you and right. you're going to redo the motor anyway, right. you know, as right. opposed to... Uh, right. Do a lot of people like to do it right from the factory brand new or do they wait until they have twenty or 30,000 miles? We're on? getting a lot of brand new cars yeah. and they just yeah. want to do it up. Everybody's got to have the factory. <laughs> right. And you know, I know that sounds like a lot of money, but compared to, you figure the car is about $100,000. Right. So you're paying $129,000, $130,000, which is still less than you'd pay for many exotics, turbo sports cars of Porsche or uh, McLaren or some of those things. So although it initially seems like a lot, and certainly it is a lot, but compared to the base price of other supercars that have way less horsepower, it's, it's still a bargain. That's always been the real key to the GTR, you know, the fact that you've got uh, Porsche turbo performance at literally almost half the price. Correct. Right? Yeah. Uh, show us some of the other dress-up stuff. Is, is this you as well? Correct. The carbon fiber we call a cooling plate. Right, okay. And then we have a carbon fiber intake right here. Okay, now this is all strictly just for looks, right? You could say looks more than all it really functions, but we are keeping the hot air because the air right. filter is right under here. Right, okay. So, yeah, yeah. so it works a little bit both ways. But the weight-wise is not much of a difference. Not much difference at all, same. no. And of course, no matter how technically innovative your car is, you still have the stick. We talked about this. Nobody has improved on the stick. The stick has been since the 40s, the 20s. The basic, you can put struts and gas, lightweight, durable. Sticks. Figure you break that stick, what's it going to cost you? Six bucks? There you go. It's a heck of a deal. How about the interior? Let's close the hood up here and see, Definitely. see what we got. Don't worry, we're going to take this for a ride in a little bit. Just calm down. <laughs> you know, it's a great looking car. It's, uh, this one has obviously got trick wheels and everything else on it. Right. I must admit, when this car first came out, I was a little overwhelmed by the electronics. Right. There's so much kind of video game generation stuff. Pretty amazing, but, uh, what year is this one? 2010. That's the 2010. Okay, very nice. You know, and this is uh, the fun thing about these. These are a car you can drive every day. Very nice dashboard, paddle shifter, obviously. Right. And then we kept it very everyday friendly. Yeah, what do you have here? That's a boost controller. Well, so you can control the boost? You definitely can. Okay. Now, Standard 91 octane works fine? Definitely is yeah, fine. Okay, okay. And it takes about 10 seconds, we can flash into a race map. Okay, yeah. Which it takes C16 or 109 oh, okay. race gas. Okay. Well, let's say, yeah, it's just no underhood adjustment, right? <laughs> right. Wow, that's pretty amazing. Now, what happens if you run uh, in the race mode with 91 octane? Do you risk melting a piston or something? No. No? With the motor we built is not a problem. That's why we offer the one year unlimited warranty. I see, yeah, it just, you just won't get as much power. Right. Yeah, very nice. And at the same time, that 10 seconds, we do switch a map to back up the timing on the pump gas. Gotcha, gotcha. How about suspension? What suspension changes have you made? We have a complete suspension setup. It's by HKS, a big aftermarket Japanese mm -hmm. company. Right. It's a coilover system with a 32 weight dampening on it. Yeah. So basically, we have a setup for the street so the ride not too harsh. Is so it later, lower than stock? Uh, we said 17 millimeter lower than stock. Okay. Nothing crazy. Uh, do you have a thing to, does it raise up if you hit a speed bump or you want to go in the driveway? Um, discard, no. No, okay, but, well, 17 millimeters, that's not much. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's yeah. not. 
Very nice, very nice. Let's, let's look at the back of the car. <laughs> This is aftermarket, obviously. Right, that's yeah. by Titec, a full right. carbon fiber wing. Do you get any benefit on the street by having a wing? I really have to say, when you're not reaching the speed, the wing is most time for looks. If right. you are a car guy, yeah, you, you yeah, definitely, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. I have to admit, um, when I got my 87 Countach, the first thing I did was take the wing off, because I just thought right. it, it, it ruined the pure design of the car. But this wing would come into effect above what speed would you see a benefit? Above 100, 120? I see around 120. Yeah. It will start really, you can feel the car is getting pushed down to right. squat down right. a little bit. Right. Yeah, yeah. Very nice, very nice. Well, boy, I actually see nicely. Anything else different back here? It's got a full titanium exhaust here. Then you can see it's the exhaust tip look like a jet engine. The yeah, very car. blue. Yeah. The bluing in there. Right, with is all the ventilation on it. Is that bluing naturally or do you guys? It's, it's That's okay. just from the heat. Okay. Yes, yeah, yes, yes, because titanium's the nature of doing that. Right, it makes a lot of heat. Well, boy, it's a good looking car, and <laughs> it's not flashy in a, in a kind of a, you know, I hate, I hate it when it's over the top. Over the top right. with 22s. Right. You know, I never right. quite get that. Right. What size wheels do you have on here? These are a stock size 20 inch wheel, which is one wider in a yeah. running sump. Yeah. Sticky tires for you to test ride. These are yeah, Toil tw AA. 20 is about as, about as big right. as I want to get. Right. On the street, you hit a pot, especially in LA, streets are so bad, boom, you totally agree I've with you. I've broken wheels twice yes. with, with these big dubs on right. them. Now, but <laughs> boy, it's, it's a good looking car. And how long has the GTR been out now? How many years? Since 2009 and the, the 2013 is the latest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right around. And this four, body four. style holds up well. You know, it's, yeah. it's a good looking car. And it just sort of evolves over the years. Nicely done. Let's Thank see. you. Well, it's uh, time to take it for a ride. Now these GTRs are really about the best performance bargain you can find. You know, initially when this car came out, I was just overwhelmed by the electronics and the four-wheel drive. It just seemed like an overly complicated car, but in reality, all modern supercars are extremely complicated. And uh, this one has proven itself well. You know, right. I, uh, you know, the last few years, it's been out for three or four years now, I don't hear many complaints from people, you know. I don't hear, obviously, there are guys that abuse and I'm sure you see it. Right, definitely. People blow them up all the time. <laughs> you know, it's even lifts the throttle on the downshift. And that squeak is from those aftermarket pads, isn't that correct? That's yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah. Does this have carbon fiber rotors? No, no it doesn't. Steel, yeah. right. In Japan, there's a V-spec model. It comes right. with a ceramic right, rotors. Right. Right. I don't know if you really need ceramic rotors on the street. I mean, a lot of guys like them because it's kind it's of a cool, cool thing to have. But agree with you on yeah, that, definitely. Uh, I'm not on the brakes that much on the street that I need to get them <laughs> that hot, you know? You know, it's funny, it's, at no point does this feel like a four-wheel drive car. You know, I come from the era when four-wheel drive was a little clunky, and you're always a little suspicious of it, but it's so smooth and so well integrated. Pretty amazing. I like that exhaust. A lot of people might think it's too noisy, but it's better than listening to the radio. It's amazing you get this much performance with 91 octane gas is what we have here in California. And we run about 10% uh, ethanol here. So right. it's, uh, it's pretty amazing that the cars move at all. You know, I'm very impressed with the tractability of this car. You know, I drive a lot of tuna cars and you have to be polite. Because the guys always make excuses, you know. Well, it's not running right just now. Or, oh, I don't have this done. Or, I'm waiting to do that. You know, and you get a lot of hesitation and sputtering. This thing is very smooth. Pulls nicely all through the rev range.
You know, it's amazing how this car just revitalized the brand for me. Because I have to admit, I wasn't that interested in Nissan until this car came out. Let's take it up the freeway and see what it sounds like in sixth gear. This car is waiting for the chase car to catch up with you. But very nice on the freeway, the, the exhaust, which seems very loud when you're getting on it, is not bad. We're doing about uh, 75 miles an hour, turning at about 2700 RPM, 2600. Oh, one of those things, basically a hot rod. You can go anywhere with it and take it for a trip. so much about a car like this is how it makes you feel. Are you comfortable driving it? And you know, it's a really nice car to drive. Everything integrates very nicely. There's nothing harsh about it. Even though it shifts incredibly violent, it's not a violence that's uh, unsteadying to the nerves. It doesn't make you feel like it's going to blow apart, you know? It's very strong. It's very tight. and very progressive. Obviously, $100,000 is a lot of money, but you're getting $200,000 to $300,000 worth of performance, so that's uh, pretty amazing. Well, anyway, that'll give you some idea what it does. Uh, now, you can you can reprogram this to... Uh, to the launch control one, which brings us up yeah. to 4,000 RPM versus the 2,000 RPM. Right, which right. Is Obviously, I think they had a... I know the early GTRs, guys were blowing up transfer cases and Correct. stuff left and right. Um, so Nissan decides to Yeah, go obviously right. you get to 60 pretty quickly without a lot of drama and a lot of wheel spin, and that's basically what it's about. I mean, it's 0 to 60 and 2.8, and once you're rolling, bam, it just shifts so hard. But Alex, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for uh, bringing this car by, and uh, you know, I have to admit, I forgot how good it was. I, I, I drove one of these when they first came out. I was impressed with it, but I was kind of overwhelmed by the electronics and all the stuff, and since that time, all the other manufacturers have caught, have caught up and now they're using all basically the same electronics but it drives nicely it handles nicely very progressive impressive give us your website again sp-power.com there you go check it out alex thank you my friend thank you very much jake see you guys next week thank you